Cloud Services is now capable of taking a set of 2D images and processing them in order to create 3D geometry that you can bring directly into Vectorworks to be used either directly or as a guide. Uh, what we'll do here is I've just made a folder just called Photos to 3D Model for this demo. And in here I have a number of images. Um, images can be taken, uh, they don't have to be taken with the Nomad app or with a particular smartphone application. They can be taken with your phone, a regular point and shoot camera, digital camera, or uh, in this case these were even taken from a drone. Um, I believe these are stills taken from video. That'll work as well. And what we have here is the subject is this little gazebo in the middle of a park here. Uh, we can see that it has this bright red roof, bright clear lines, and that it's very different from the surrounding geometry. That'll make it easy to get an image out of. Now, we'll get all this as well. The image processing will get pretty much everything that's in the image. And you can see as we go down the images, what we're doing is we're keeping vaguely the same distance to the main target and, and trying to orbit all the way around it. So as we go through these images, we can see... It does basically a 360 spin around the gazebo, keeping it vaguely in the same distance and position in the shot all the time. Uh, there are more details on how to do this well, how to take good source images, but this is what we'll be focusing on to start with. You can see him down there taking the drone images, flying it there. And what we'll do is we'll go up to the very top, select the first image, and I don't believe it matters what order you select these in, but we'll just select everything in this folder, hold shift and click the last to select all of them. Then we'll right click and choose photos to 3D model. Uh, the reason I recommended doing a folder earlier was that we're going to need to make an output folder which is going to show up in this directory. So we'll just call this gazebo. We'll click done and then we can check, the, it'll disappear and we can check the progress in the bottom left here under status. We can see the status here. We could also see the status in cloud services as well if we opened up the app and checked there. We'll wait for this to finish and then we'll come back. There we are and that's finished. That took about 30, 40 minutes to finish. Uh, we queued for a little while, which just means your job is queued up behind a few others. But um, we can go and take a look at the files now. You can actually click the eyeball here to be taken right to it. So what it'll make first is the point cloud, and then it'll make the OBJ file with its texture and material. Uh, if you don't see this, for instance, you can just wait just another moment. You see this one, you can see it was finished at 11.54. These were finished a little bit later. So the point cloud will come out first, and then you'll have the other objects. So what we'll do is we can now go into the cloud services folder, pop that open. In here we'll see we have our photos to 3D model. You can see our images and we have our gazebo file with the expected files. We can bring these right into Vectorworks now. We'll open up Vectorworks with a new blank document. And we could do, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll do the OBJ file first. Now the OBJ file, this will bring in an actual mesh with a texture to it. This file needs the material and the JPEG files present in order to get the texturing. Otherwise, you're just going to get a grayscale model. You're not going to get any color. We'll go ahead and drag this in to import it. And this just brings up the regular OBJ import file. So we'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit. And as you can see, this file is much larger and will be a little bit slower when we use Vectorworks. So I generally perform, I prefer the uh, PTS, the point cloud file, especially since it's easier to snap to. Now, you can leave most of the settings as their default. Uh, the model space units, this only matters if you happen to know that it was... Uh, for instance, if you were importing an OBJ and you know it was modeled in feet, but for any sort of photos to 3D model tech, you're not going to know what the units are, so this really does not matter. You can use the document units. It doesn't matter what you set this to because we'll be scaling it after the fact. This is a little more important. Uh, importing the transparency and image data as RenderWorks textures. If you don't do this, you won't see any textures. It'll just be clear. If you don't import the materials, it'll just be white or gray. You won't see anything else. This will allow you to create RenderWorks textures for all the materials. So even if it determines that it was a color, it will do that. So I believe that when you're using 3D models from images, that this will always be enabled. Uh, mesh smoothing, this is you can use this if you want to or not. It works just the same as the regular mesh smoothing. It simply applies it on import. You can smooth what it looks like ahead of time, but this will actually reduce the number of faces that are imported. We can click OK, and we'll speed this up as well. The mesh import will take usually significantly longer than the point cloud import, just for your reference. And here we have our imported mesh. And since this was drone footage, we got quite a large area out of it in the first place. So what I'm going to do is place the point here, 
and then see if we can rotate around this and find our object. I'm going to show you in just a moment why I prefer the point cloud to the mesh. There we go. There's our object. And of course, it's out of rotation and out of scale. We can fix that, but we're going to fix that in a different portion. Now, with a mesh object, I, I'm sorry, I think this is still very cool how it recreated this just from an image. We have a pretty good idea of our of our gazebo here. We have a pretty good representation of what that looks like and what we actually got for the geometry out of it. But there's no easy way to remove all this extra stuff here. We don't have an easy way of removing this extra geometry that came with this mesh. So what I'm going to do is simply delete what I have here, select everything and delete it. And then we'll go back. Just drag and drop that in. It'll start to load, and it's going to ask us a few things. Again, the units here really doesn't matter because we're going to rescale it. There's no way that the photos to 3D models could know what scale this was in and what units it was drawn in because it wasn't drawn in anything. So we can leave this alone. This won't matter. Percentage to import. The only reason you would drop this down is if the point cloud that you get in after a first test is so complex that you can't move based on your video card, you're not able to process everything. I happen to know that this will come in just fine with uh, 3 million points or 3.5 million. So I'll go ahead and let it at 100% and click import. We'll speed that up again, but this generally takes a lot less time than the mesh. There we are. And we can see we have a large area because there was a lot of area covered in that photography. However, I can zip around it here and we'll zoom in. And similarly to the mesh, we can see there is our gazebo right in the middle here. And of course, the more the further you zoom in, the more um, uh, the more uh, different the points will appear. But we can go ahead and just click on that. We can see here, and we just want to focus on this area. And you can see this area is sort of a little more dense. It has a little more filled out. That's because this was the target of the image. These just have, these were just taken um, in other perspectives. These, these just happen to be featured only in one or two portions of the image. So what we'll do is we want to go from a sort of a top plan-ish view, but it doesn't have to be. And we're going to focus on just this area. So what I can do is select the point cloud and then choose isolate points. That's going to give me a polygonal drawing area, and I can simply draw out a little rectangle right around the area that I care the most about. Double click to finish. And now you can see we've isolated it to just these points. So now it moves nice and quickly. We can zoom in and out. We don't have all that extra stuff that was going on before, and we only get one point cloud. We don't get multiple meshes. But if I go into top plan view, we can see that's not top plan view at all. That's a strange sort of abstract bottom isometric view. So what we'll do now is we'll orient it the proper direction. We'll look at it in a couple different views to try to get an idea of how it's wrong and how we can correct it. So this is a front view and this is a side view. So first we'll go ahead and just try to lay it down. Uh, but I want to show you something about the, uh, the rotate tool that's important. First, make sure it's in the first mode, not duplicate mode. Otherwise, you'll have multiple separate um, instances of the point cloud and that'll just become confusing. Then we want to have it in this first mode here, but we want to disable automatic for the plane. As you can see, if we draw our rotate tool and move it over top of this, it's attempting to snap to each of these points and a snap to their face. We don't want it to do that because we want to rotate on the plane that we're looking at now, this plane right here. So we'll change this from automatic to screen aligned. So now I'm able to actually snap to all the various points on this model, but I don't try to snap to the plane with the rotate tool. So we'll change this from automatic and we'll change that to screen aligned so that now we can see if we snap over these points, we'll still snap to them, but it won't try to align to their plane and that's what we don't want. So we'll go to a front view here, we'll go to a left view, go to a top. Let's see if we can't line it up in the right view first. So what we'll do is we'll click here and here just along a vaguely straight edge. It really doesn't matter for this. We'll lay that down and then we go to a left view. We can lay it down in that view as well. And I'm just holding shift to make a straight alignment here. Go into a front or a side view. And you can just do this a number of times until you get the object laying down the way you're looking for. That's pretty close. And we can lay this down one more time here. There we are, and that's 
get pretty close. And we'll go into top view and we can square this off. That's the easiest if you go to top. You get really good at this, you can just do it in top, left, and then front, and you can normally get it in just three rotations. But the first couple times you do it, it'll take you a little bit of practice uh, to get it lined up. Once we have that there, there we are. Now if I look at that into various views, that's aligned pretty well. Let's straighten this side view up just a bit more. There we are, and you can go into as much t t detail as you want with this now. So now we have a pretty straight model lined up the way we want. And of course you could just go into top plan view and use the regular rotate command to just rotate it all the way around to however you like. That's just a matter of how you have it oriented in your project. Uh, the next thing we want to correct is the scale. So if we look at this object right now, it's about, oh, I'd say 10, maybe 15 feet across. That's probably not right. So what we'll do, is we'll go to a view, and I happen to know that the height of this object is about 12 feet. I happen to know that the height of this is about 12 feet tall, this object here. So I'll select this object, the point cloud. I'll go to Modify, and then I'll go to Scale Objects. And I know it's going to be 12 feet for the new distance, but I don't know what the current distance is, and I don't need to know. So I'll go ahead and just click this button, zoom in, and I happen to know from here, holding Shift down to here, is exactly 12 feet. Type in 12. It'll scale up out of my vision, most likely. Zoom out again here. And let's see. Now it says this is about 30 feet of distance, but I'm going to try that one more time. I happen to know that this distance from here to here is 12 feet. So I'll go to Modify, Scale Objects. Click this, and we'll make sure we got these points this time. And that originally says currently it's 2 feet, and I want it to be 12 feet. We'll click OK. And now we zoom out, and we can see, there we go. That's now a couple of hundred feet like it should be. That's about how big this object is. The last thing we want to do is the, um, the, the Z location in it. So here's zero up here. You can see on the ruler on the left. We're just going to grab this, and this is very simple. Just hold shift down, move it up towards zero, grab it on the ground, let go, and now our ground is relatively at zero. And you could move this up or down if you wanted to. If you wanted the ground of the gazebo to be exactly at zero, that's what you would just bump it down to do. And then you can, of course, line it up in X and Y uh, top plan if you want as well. However, we're pretty close to zero, zero, so we don't need to mess with that here. And now what I can do is if I go to start drawing objects, I can now draw objects directly in this. So if I go to draw the walls, I can draw another little building just down the road from it. Draw that there, finish it up, and I can see if I render an OpenGL, I can see my solid object. So uh, point clouds, as you know, will of course look pretty similar in OpenGL and wireframe, but uh, we can actually see our objects if we use the wireframe detail. So now you can see, I can now draw an addition to this object or just its replacement. If I'm gonna do demo on this, I can just block it out and show what I'm going to replace and have it basically in situ and I don't have to redraw all this geometry from scratch. That's the best part of this. I can use this stuff as guide geometry and building more objects. So, and this is of course fully 3D. So if I go to do, for instance, a door tool, grab that door, place it vaguely here, it'll place on the ground plane. Go up here, build one right there on the roof. And these of course work perfectly in 3D. These are snapped to each other. I'm snapped to those little point geometry. And that lets you trace effectively in 3D without having to redraw this whole scene and spend a whole afternoon doing that. I've scanned it in less than 10 minutes.